Ryan. Look, I know you're busy. You don't have to entertain me, but uh, you can trust me. Uh, I'll tell you a couple things about myself. I'm 19. I've been overseas for a couple semesters. Now I'm back. John Cusack. You're just a country boy. And you never knew me. Emily Lloyd. What do these three people have in common? They are all actors who we both are calling breakthrough stars of 1990. Fine actors who we feel came into their own this past year and who we are featuring on this special edition of Siskel and Ebert. I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. Our first breakthrough star of 1990 is an actor who's been making movies for more than a decade, but 1989 was a very good year for him. I'm referring to Denzel Washington, who first came to really wide recognition in 1987 when he played South African freedom fighter Stephen Biko in Cry Freedom. We have to teach our children black history. Tell them about our black heroes, yeah. our black culture, yeah. so they don't face the white man believing they are inferior. That was a good role, but not as good as it might have seemed because the story turned out to be more about a white newspaper editor than about the black activist. The Oscar nomination Washington received was for Best Supporting Actor, not Best Actor. It took a movie from early last year, a movie named The Mighty Quinn, to give Washington his first major above the title starring role. He was a Caribbean police chief on the trail of a conspiracy in a thriller set to great reggae music on the soundtrack. You think you have it made, don't you? You come down here and you do what you want, you take what you want, you kill who you want. Denzel Washington did good work in a lot of movies before The Mighty Quinn. Here he is, for example, in the 1984 Oscar nominee, A Soldier Story. So where are you from, Peterson? Hollywood, California. Uh, by way of Alabama, sir. And in late 1989, he played a soldier again in Glory. He was one of the first black soldiers in the American Civil War. Here he gives some straight talk to his commander, played by Matthew Broderick. What about us? What do we get? But The Mighty Quinn was the first movie to show the full range of his star power as an engaging, humorous, attractive leading man. Why you don't get him something cool to drink, huh? He has a whole heap of grief to get off his big chest. What about my chest? <laughs> how long the you offer last? And seeing that movie again just now, I'm reminded all over again how much I enjoyed it. Denzel Washington is a good example of the serious actor who does serious work in serious films and needs a great entertainment like the Mighty Quinn in order to really break loose and show his special qualities. The earlier roles were somehow more narrow in their definition. The Mighty Quinn was on my list of 1989's 10 best films, and Denzel Washington was one of the major reasons for that. He took what could have been a disposable thriller and gave it a special poetry and charm. Well, he lit up the whole screen. I mean, when you are getting close-ups like that and you can hold the screen and hold our interest, that's what they call yeah. a star. And this guy really came through and you said, who is that? We'd seen him before, but not photographed just like this, where he is the center of the picture. Yeah, he, and it's exciting to see. His dramatic roles were more thankless in a way. He was doing a right. good job, but not the sort of job where you would say, gee, I can't wait to see the new Denzel Washington picture. After right. the Mighty Quinn, I couldn't wait to see what he would exactly. do. Exactly. Our next breakthrough star who really came of age in 1989 is actress Emily Lloyd, who I think may be just as good as Meryl Streep in her ability to take on accents and the behavior of radically different people. For example, Lloyd's first role was as a working class English girl Wise beyond her years in Wish You Were Here from 1987. I've seen you here before. No. Why not? I've not been here, have I, Drip? Then last year, two wildly different American roles. First, as an Italian American mobster's stubborn daughter in Cookie. You're too stupid to know what I'm talking about. Well, if you're so smart, then why are you partners with that creep's father, huh? Then her best work yet in the movie In Country, playing the lazily curious southern daughter of a soldier who died in Vietnam. She questions her uncle, Bruce Willis, 
about the war. Did you get sprayed with Agent Orange over there, Emmett? Why? Something wrong with him? <laughs> well, yeah, he gets his headaches and he can't sleep. Is that the same actress in Cookie and in the movie In Country? Hard to believe. At this point, with Emily Lloyd at age only 18, the only question seems to be, what can't she do? So far, she's picking highly varied films, and that's a good sign for a young actress. This is not going to be just a teenage throwaway star. Well, there are two uh, ways to look at her career. The one, of course, she's a Cockney actress. Uh, born and raised in London. So the amazing thing is that she can do an Italian-American and then she can do a Southerner and be so convincing that to American ears like ours, she sounds absolutely on target. So that's a technical feat. What's even more impressive is that in all three of her movies, she provides such a mature, well-rounded, in-depth, convincing performance. She is an actress. Right. And not just a, uh, a, technician. a technician, yes. No, I mean, and she, again, takes center screen. Now, we were talking about Denzel Washington being photographed center screen. Emily Lloyd isn't photographed quite that way in her pictures, yet she takes over the scenes that she's in. She can hold a whole movie by herself. Can't wait to see what's going to happen to her in the decade yeah. to come. When we come back, a breakthrough star named Meg Ryan, who had one of the year's most talked about restaurant scenes in When Harry Met Sally. Are you okay? Continuing now, our special show we're calling Breakthrough Stars of 1990. We're focusing on actors and actresses who really came of age last year. And our next honoree is Daniel Day-Lewis. Not a new face, but not the household name he really deserves to be either. He is triumphant in and deserves an Oscar, certainly, for his portrait of a gutsy, crippled man in my left foot. Lewis, 32, from England, made his film debut, however, in Gandhi. Get off the pavement, you bloody coon. Then came his reputation-making one-two punch, first in 1985 as the gay co-manager of a London laundry in my beautiful laundrette. I want you to work here with me. What kind of work is it? Then a year later, his role as the effete fiancé in A Room with a View. Hard to believe it's the same actor. I'm sorry. Two years later, in the unbearable lightness of being, Lewis played a Czech doctor caught up in political as well as sexual turmoil. And this past year, his performance as the remarkable Christy Brown in My Left Foot. Daniel Day-Lewis playing a man crippled but hardly broken by cerebral palsy. The performance is technically perfect, and the fiery, abrasive inner spirit of the real Christy Brown shows through. There's no actor's ego here wanting to make Christy into more of a saint than he really was. And at this point, I don't know if there really is a better actor around than Daniel Day-Lewis. And I mean that. You think Dustin Hoffman won an Oscar last year for playing a man with a disability, mm -hmm. uh, an idiot savant. What's the difference I don't between know. the two I roles? I don't think there's another actor around that I can think of who could play, have played Christy Brown as well as Daniel Day-Lewis. And the amazing thing is, he is able to sell this man. Because it, given the conditions of Christy Brown's life, he could have easily inspired a very grim and, and, and gloomy and boring and depressing film. Or, you know, film, or, or triumphantly not, heroic. Yes, and it, it's not, neither is it saintly nor is it uh, pious. It is a... a, a thoroughly and a completely entertaining film, a portrait of this man who is filled with life and filled with spirit, and it's Daniel Day-Lewis who is able to sell that. It's amazing. Remarkable triumph. My next breakthrough star of 1990 is an actress named Meg Ryan who got a lot of attention during the year for her work in the Rob Reiner comedy When Harry Met Sally. And once again, this was a case of an actress who had a lot of good roles in a lot of big movies but needed the right role to really showcase herself, to really break through. One of Ryan's first big supporting roles was in 1986 as the wife of a Navy pilot in Top Gun. Hey, Goose, you big stud! That's me, honey. Take me to bed or lose me forever. The next year, she had the female lead in Inner Space, a science fiction comedy with Dennis Quaid inside Martin Short's Bloodstream. I thought it was a terrific movie, but it was a box office disappointment. How did you get involved in this? Me? Uh, well, uh... That's a long story. Well, good. I'm a reporter. I love long stories. Meg Ryan had another good role in 1988's DOA, which also starred Dennis Quaid, this time as a man with 24 hours to live. I'm not going to see you again, am I? It took when Harry met Sally to really put Meg Ryan on the map in a comedy where she and Billy Crystal meet in 1977 and fall in love in 1989 after a 12-year debate on whether or not men and women can really be friends. And this is the scene that attracted the most attention as Ryan chooses a restaurant for a demonstration on the art of faking an orgasm. Oh, yes! 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 Oh! 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 Oh, God! 
I'll have what she's having. When Harry met Sally, he gave Meg Ryan a chance to play her character over a full range of development from the early days when she's a new college graduate to later years when she's a Manhattan career woman. In her earlier movie, she was essentially limited to what could be called the woman's role, a well-defined but limited role in a movie that was really about the adventures of the male characters, really about Dennis Quaid. When Harry Met Sally was the first movie where she was at center screen, growing and changing, and it showcased her not only as a good actress, but what sometimes a lot more difficult, a good comic oh, actress. Oh yeah, I think that's yeah. a real skill. I think she's a really a fine, good, young comedian. Mm -hmm. And I think she can handle the drama too. And yeah. it'll be interesting to see if she can st get stretched in both ways. Mm -hmm. I think she's obviously equal to it. Very good. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, two more breakthrough stars of 1990. And they both starred in the same movie this past year. I think that we should spend some time apart. Now, our next breakthrough star of 1990 is another actor who's been around for a while but who got a breakthrough role last year. His name is John Cusack, and his big movie was a wonderful human comedy named Say Anything, which should get some major Oscar nominations this year, but probably won't, because it opened way last April, and the Academy voters have an attention span of three months max. Say Anything was an especially intelligent teenage love story starring Cusack as an ordinary kid who falls in love with the class beauty. I just can't have any social life right now. Don't worry about it. Just have a coffee. We'll be antisocial. John Cusack seems to be one of those actors who can play teenagers forever. Here he is five years ago, 1984, in his second film, Sixteen Candles. Do not embarrass me, okay? For sure you won't. His first big role in a good movie was in 1985 in The Sure Thing, where he played a kid hitchhiking cross-country with a schoolmate he thinks he doesn't like. This is called shotgunning beer. It's an ancient tribal custom. Originated in Southeast Asia, I believe. Okay. John Cusack has been as busy as any young actor in the last four or five years. He's nearly always good, except when he gets involved in a misconceived project like tape heads. But it took Say Anything to provide him with a character of enormous subtlety and humanity, a kid with enough self-respect that he felt he deserved to love the most beautiful girl in school, and enough imagination to love her because she was the smartest girl in the class. Say Anything was one of the year's special films and one of its best, and it put John Cusack on the map as a serious actor. Well, I think the word serious is the part that I think offers hope for him for the 90s to grow out of the teenage roles, which he's done so well. There's a quality in this guy that I think shows that he can hurt on screen and is willing to hurt on screen. He is hurting for the affection of this young woman, and that's the part that distinguishes him. It's easy to waltz through a teenage picture with all the highs of the film and the fake lows and all that, but there's something in the way he talks to her where you realize what a tender, nervous thing it is to declare your affection and, and possibly be rejected. And that quality of emotion, I think, is what's going to make him stand out. There is a mixed blessing about the fact that there are so many films about teenagers these days, yeah. a lot of them quite successful. And that bl mixed blessing, the mixed part of it is, a lot of adults never see the really best of those films because they mm -hmm. kind of dismiss them all in one category. Right. And this is a movie, Say Anything, right. that anyone would enjoy. It's a terrific film. Okay, our next breakthrough star of 1990 is Ione Sky from that same film, and she co-starred with John Cusack this past year in Say Anything, playing the troubled daughter of John Mahoney. Sky, aged 19, made her film debut in the great 1986 teen drama River's Edge, playing one of the girls who at first looks away when a classmate is murdered. Who do I call anyway? The police, I guess. What, I'm supposed to know the number? After some TV work, Ione Sky last year played the lead role in the romantic comedy The Rachel Papers, the story of a young Englishman pursuing an American girl. Who's giving this policy anyway? I am, actually, and I don't remember inviting you. Then came Say Anything, where Sky was luminescent as a seemingly model young woman beset, however, by a troubled father as well as the more standard problems of a boyfriend. I don't want to leave something out because I know I can say anything to you. You're a liar and a thief. Don't take it easy how bad you make me. I'm the only dad you've got. Because of her all-American good looks, Ione Skye would appear to be just another pretty face, but somehow she manages to select roles that turn that surface beauty on its head in a way, getting us to look at the young woman who can demand honesty 
from the people that she meets, and all too often, she fails to get it. Behind her pretty face, Ione Skye stands for someone who won't be trifled with, and my suspicion is that that quality in herself, as well as her characters, is going to apply and make her a big star for the 90s. So here we have two good performances in a good movie, or great performances in a great movie. I remember when this film came out, we talked about it on this show with the greatest of enthusiasm. Right. And, uh... I think that it's quite possible that five, ten years from now, if you go back and look at this movie, it'll be a watermark for two very important actors of the next ten years. I hope so, because, yeah. boy, they're good in it. If they can be this good, they shouldn't blow it, is what we're really okay, saying. Okay, yeah, so keep going, kids. Coming up next, Mary Stuart Masterson, who had two showcase roles during 1989 in Chances Are and Immediate Family. We're just looking at my pictures. Oh. Our next breakthrough star of 1990 is the English actor, writer, director, Kenneth Branagh, who burst upon the big screen in a big way late last year with his film version of Shakespeare's Henry V, portraying the warrior king in a different light than the way Laurence Olivier did in his celebrated film 43 years earlier. Branagh's Henry seemed more power hungry, more manipulative, and just as charismatic. But tell the Dauphin, I will keep my state be like a king and show my sail of greatness when I do rouse me in my throne of France. When Roger and I saw that film, we both thought that that was the first time we had seen Kenneth Branagh in a movie. Well, we were wrong. In 1987, he starred in two good films. First, A Month in the Country, where he co-starred with Colin Firth as a battle-scarred World War I veteran trying to find some meaning in his life. It will always be different, won't we? There are a lot of us, all the millions of us that survived if the millions did. Different, I mean, from the generations who went before who had no idea that anything like that could ever happen. Then that same year, he played an incompetent British spy searching for a double agent on a Greek island in high season. You're a traitor! You betrayed your country. Now they let you go scot-free, you should be hanged. Now, those are not the biggest of roles, those last two, but I think they are good films, confirming that Branagh, who at age 28 already has had a long and distinguished career on the British stage, he is anything but a flash in the pan. His work on Henry V could signal a reinterest in filming Shakespeare, and that alone would put a fresh face on the decade of the 1990s. Now, one of the crosses that Branagh has to bear is the fact that he's being called the new Olivier. Yeah, that'll and drop off in a few years. Other people have been called the new Olivier. There's only one Olivier. There'll only be one Branagh. That's good enough for him because he's a wonderful actor. And in this film, the way that he brings a freshness and an immediacy to Henry V is really sensational. The, and the courage, not to mention the ability to manipulate and to wheel and deal that got him to make this movie at the yeah. age of 28, to produce it, to direct it, to, to he, didn't, he didn't write it, to star in it, uh, it's pretty impressive. Well, that's what I like. I mean, the enterprise to do this, you know, there are people all around at this age level who are trying to make their name in the movies. You don't make your name necessarily doing Henry V on film. And I think it's great that he did it, and I think it's great that he got the notoriety he has achieved. My next choice is Mary Stuart Masterson, and she is a wonderful young actress who got two ideal roles last year. Her first big movie role was in 1985's great movie, At Close Range, where she played Sean Penn's confused girlfriend. You know what I don't get is why they let everybody else out and they set Brad's bail so high. And in Some Kind of Wonderful in 1987, she played a tomboy in love with a guy who thinks of her only as his best friend, if he only knew. I know how you feel. Oh, you do? Really? You've been in love before. There's a lot of things you don't know about me. Also that year, Francis Ford Coppola gave her an important role in Gardens of Stone as a young Marine's wife. Men come home crazy and broken and cold. But probably the best role of Mary Stuart Masterson's career came last year in Chances Are when she played a young woman who dates her reincarnated father without realizing it. God, you sure have grown up nicely. I'm glad you approve. Good night. Night. And she gave a completely opposite but just as effective performance last year in Immediate Family as a young woman considering giving up her baby for adoption. You and Michael been married for 10 years. How do you do it? How do you, how do you stay married that long? 
If there is one thread in common in all of Mary Stuart Masterson's characters, it's a strong will and a lot of courage. She plays brave and stubborn young women as well as anyone around, and she does it in such a way that we feel a lot of sympathy for her. There aren't a lot of actresses who can convincingly play a genuinely heroic woman without looking silly, but Masterson can, and she can do it with conviction. Because a lot of her early work was in movies that did poorly at the box office or were aimed at a teenage audience, a lot of people may not have had a chance to see her, but in Chances Are and Immediate Family, she did the kind of work that earns and deserves recognition. You know, somebody asked me um, late last year to pick the one actress that I thought that might not be a household name who really hit it big in the 90s, and that's the name I came up with, Mary Stuart Masterson. And you know, when I watch her, I am not conscious of her age. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Of course she's young. But when you watch her, you are watching this actress irrespective of her age. Oh, In yeah. immediate family, if she were 15 years older, it wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. She doesn't play a girl. She doesn't use that crutch of the cute personality or that kind of thing. This is, uh, she's, she's, right straight there. Up. she's right there. She's looking you straight in the eye. She's dealing with you. She's dealing with issues. She's dealing with her feelings in a real honest way. If you wanted to get somebody to play an honest woman in the movies, you could go for her and she could walk right in and convince you and the I'm first glad, shot. And I'm glad you used the word woman because that's exactly who she is. And that's it for this week's special edition of Siskel and Ebert. Next time, we'll be back with reviews of some new movies, hopefully starring some of our talented breakthrough stars. That's next week. And until then, the balcony is closed. Magla latex rubber gloves with absorbent lining, non-slip grip. Protective for all household chores. From Magla Home Helpers. Rice Aroni, the San Francisco treat. Now with 30 flavors, you can serve it every day for a month and never serve the same dish twice. Fab, for a clean that's comfortably soft. Fab. Snow Caps, Raisinets, and Goobers. Three big box office hits starring Nestle Milk Chocolate. Moviegoers give them a definite two thumbs up.